Hello everyone, welcome back to this new tutorial on XCircuit. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use XCircuit to create your own library of symbols. So to do that, first of all, first of all start XCircuit by double clicking on that icon. And then suppose you have a number of symbols. That symbols may be coming from this standard library that you can get by pressing letter L. So type L and you will get this symbol, for example, Suppose you want to have one more, you know, symbol for this one, for example, and then you also want to have one more symbol that you are you are going to use again and again. So you would like to have the symbol stored your own in your own library. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this symbol here and this symbol here. And to know how to create these symbols, you can watch the previous, you know, how to, previous videos. So suppose I have this three symbol. In order to create a new library containing all these three elements, what you will do is you will first of all click on this one. I mean, select this symbol. So shift and left click and type letter M. M as in man or mango. So type M and then name this symbol as say NMOS5 because NMOS4 is already present in some library or something. So you can name it anything. Press OK and then type in here, shift and press letter M again and say it is PMOS5 and then choose this symbol. So to choose this symbol, I will click shift and draw a rectangle around it by dragging left mouse button. So this is highlighted and then I will type M. Simply type M from your keyboard and then say this symbol I'm calling as say triangle or something like that. Okay, triangle and press OK. Now go ahead and save this if you want to save this, uh, you know, for your later use. So save this circuit. So I'm going to call this, for example, I'm going to save this on my desktop. There is a folder on my desktop that is empty folder. And I'm going to save this, uh, you know, uh, schematic here. And I'm going to call this my sims. OK, so or my sim five, for example. Now, this step has nothing to do with the creation of symbols or library. OK, this is I'm saving this, you know, as you will save any schematic, I'm saving this schematic for my own later use. But once you have done that, now your next step is to go here and, you know, sorry, escape, go press L a couple of times and you will see this library here. OK, so this is the library that you see that you created just now. So if you press L button, L as in line, the L is for library, right? So if you press L a couple of times, you will go to this library that you just created and you now you have to save it. So go to file and click on save library and name this as say my lib five. OK, press OK and then you can, uh, you know, go here and say file quit. Now, if you go to this uh, library, you'll see that you have now two things. One is the you know regular schematic you, you, that you draw normally. So this is what you have here file best fit. So this is the regular way of, you know, creating symbols. So this doesn't have to do with the library. I just, you know, save this for my later use. But I, when I save the library, it will create this, you know, my lib 5lps file. OK, so this is the library file that you will use now. In order to use that library, I will create click X circuit, a start X circuit again. And then if you press L a couple of times, now you will not see that library that you just created. Why? Because by default, LT, this X circuit will load its own, you know, default libraries, not the one that you created. Now, in order to load that library, you will go to file and click on load new library so you click on this new load new library and you will descend down to the folder where you have saved this library and click on this one and press ok and now if you press l lo and behold you have your library here and if you wanted to use this one for example so you can go ahead and use it and you know so that's how you do it now you, some of you would like you know they wouldn't like this approach where you have to load any library that you have created yourself again and again so to get rid of that problem what you will do is first of all close this okay quit anyway yes and go here in this folder where you have this library right and then con do control c okay copy this file copy this file 
to a new folder so to a you know directory uh, sorry to the directory where directory where you have installed the x circuit so your x circuit is located here then go to program files x86 and in x86 you have this x circuit library and here you have this startup program and you can double click here and start x circuit and whatnot and you have all the lps5 here okay so just go ahead and paste it here continue because this is c folder so i will not be able to do it without this admin permission so what i did is like you know uh let to just to recapture so in x circuit library i you know save this uh uh, the, my own library initially and then I copied that library to the home directory where I have the X circuit installed in program X, X86 folder X circuit folder right now to you know automatically load this folder all the time what you have to do is to you have to you know modify this uh, startup script so to do that I'll go here okay and I will advise you actually to keep a copy of this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, you know, Control C, and I will keep a copy of this for myself. Okay, so that like, you know, if I do some anything, you know, wrong, I have access to that startup script again. So I just copied this and saved it at some nice location because this is by default when you install X Circuit, you get this startup script. So you will save it here. Uh, sorry, you will save it at some, you know, safe location or somewhere you know just as an example i saved it there in x circuit lips now to open this in with admin uh, you know privilege you will apply you know you'll click on notepad here and right click on this one because look this is in c directory and you won't be able to make any changes without running this as admin so i will you know click on as run as administrator and this will open up this as administrator okay and then go to file open and in this one, I will go to this directory, X circuit, right? And I will click this on all files. And here I have this startup script. Now, if you read this startup script, you'll see that by default libraries, which will open with every, like, you know, every time you start your X circuit, these are the libraries that will be there in when you press L button, okay? These are four, five, six libraries. Now, in order to add your own library, what I will do is I will just copy this line and press hit enter and then, you know, type this word here and modify this as I will call this as fifth library page and then name of the library that I had. So what is the name of the library? So my name of my library is library is my live five. If you see here, the name of the library that I just, you know, created and copied here in this folder is my live five dot LPS. So I'll go ahead and I will say my live five LPS and I will change this page to say five. And then I will go ahead and click on save and then without ad admin privilege you will not be able to do this okay so now let's go ahead and check if we have access if that library that we created opens up by default so double click on x circuit and type l so this is the library right by default this is by default this is by default and lo and behold it has loaded automatically so now you can go ahead and you know go ahead and use this to create so this is the way i mean you create your own library in x circuit and uh, uh you know save this uh, all this thing and uh, you just uh, you know copy that x circuit library that you created in the home folder and then modify the startup script so i hope this tutorial was helpful and you have learned something new about x circuit and uh um if you like this video please uh, you know uh, uh, subscribe to my channel and um, hit the like button thank you very much for watching this